One of the things that nobody can prepare you for before you have children is that you will constantly have Disney music playing in your head, like really intensely. That's nobody okay. can hate you. Yeah, it, it could be worse. Some of it's very, really good. You could have like a 90s pop music. Yeah, it could be worse. <laughs> could be way that, that's always stuck in my head. <laughs> in Kanto, good. Oh, Who's that? Dr. Kramer. Ben oh, Sek oh, let me find your book. Uh, uh, can I just uh, have a very brief uh, intro of the book? Yeah, go ahead. I, I, okay. She's got to have her screen. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, funny. I'm gonna. I'll, I'm sorry that this keeps happening. I have to find. I can. Out. Can you see it? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. OK. Uh, uh, so the title of the book is The String of Precious Jewels. It's very similar to the next new book. <laughs> and it is a classical summary of Buddhist ethics. Actually, it's a brief word-by-word -word commentary on Jason Kappa's masterpiece and the es uh, essence of the ocean of vowed morality, written by Gyal Kempo, Jokpa Gyalzen. And this whole book is uh, basically covering eight big categories of vows. They are the vows of freedom, one day vow, the lifetime lay person's vow, vows of a novice monk, vows of, of a novice nun, the vows of an intermediate nun, and the last two are the vows of 40 Oden nun and the vows of 40 Oden monk. And we were in the cat we we were in the category of the vows of 40 Oden monk. And it is divided into five categories. Defeats, remainders, downfalls. And the downfalls are divided into two subcategories: downfalls to be rejected and simple downfall. And the, fourth, and the fourth category, and the fourth category yes. is items of confection, and the last one is mistakes. And we are in this category. Actually, we cover the mistakes, but there are some additional ones. So I think we are still in this category, and we are about to finish this book. <laughs> Okay, so here's a very brief intro of my book. Hope it can help our new audience. <laughs> thank you. Hey, can thank I... you. Uh, can, I... <laughs> you, can you sing some Chinese pop song? I, I have a problem with my computer. <laughs> oh, I'm afraid if I sing, then all the audience will disappear. <laughs> uh, hang on. Nick, I got I'm, uh, her text is on the wrong computer. Hang on. Oh, no problem. <laughs> Take your time. <laughs> I'm, oh, Sorry. So the computer that was dying is dying. And well, here we go. Okay. I'm on the team. Come on, come on. You can do it. All right. Come on, come on, come on. All right.
Hey, Rivas, could you sing us a good morning song? Me? Oh, Rivas. Rivas, Rivas, sing a song. Alex, save your voice. He's teaching yoga today at four. <laughs> Hasser is teaching yoga today at 8.15. So stick around after this if you want to do morning yoga or whatever it is for you. I just have business songs. Yeah, what kind of song? Do you want a Disney song? Yes. Disney. Any song, come on. <laughs> One more minute. No, he's not going to do it. He's on strike. <laughs> okay, let's see if I got it. Uh, so, shopping. I was doing some unusual things with your book. Uh, her book, as, he, as, she, as uh, Allison mentioned, she's got um, the, the five sections of monk's vows and nun's vows. And uh, one, one of the sections, the last section is called uh, Nyeje. Uh, Nye means bad. And che means I did. So uh, it means I did something bad. And these are the small, small uh, vows. They are the uh, not, they're 112. And they are not the, uh, they're not the most important ones, uh, but, but they are cool. Then, uh, so we finished all those. And then, uh, a strange thing, he started again. Mm. Okay. He started again with a list of uh, Nyejes. And uh, it's a little strange. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen now. I got, I have, I'm changing computers and, uh, all right, here we go. Uh, so here's a summary of Shopping's text. Um, we're, again, we're doing about uh, six pages English way, uh, six, about six pages uh, every term. Uh, we've done 82 pages, uh, 82 big pages out of 100. So we're about 82% finished. Uh, and her book is going to be about 400 pages total. Uh, these vows, especially the nuns vows, were lost. Uh, in the Himalaya area. So they, it's very, very exciting that uh, Allison has, has translated this because they were, uh, they were lost for a long time. And in my, when I was in the monastery, uh, they refused to make new, new full nuns because they said the vows were lost. And so it's exciting that I think that we can, uh, we, we are now making full nuns and the vows are, we brought the vows back. Uh, okay. Uh, so as Allison said, uh, suddenly we started a new kind of, uh, of nyejes. Suddenly they started doing a new section of uh, mistakes. It's called mistake. And it was very strange. Uh, and I didn't know exactly what was happening. And here's what was happening. Uh, where is that? OK. Um, somebody has to close their mic. Good. Uh, so the whole Vinaya is structured around uh, one of the ancient books is called Vinaya Vastu. And Vastu means uh, foundation. And mm -hmm. so uh, it's very famous uh, that uh, Dulwe Shi, uh, which means the foundation of Vinaya. And that uh, foundation is 17 different kinds of foundations. And we haven't really covered them. We talked about them a little bit, but uh, what's happening with uh, Allison's book is that we thought we were finished. 
because we mm-hmm. finished the last vows. Uh, and then suddenly he started making new vows. He started mentioning new nege, new, new mistakes. And there's mm-hmm. a lot. He yeah. has a lot. And uh, we were confused. I was confused. Like, what, where did he get these from? Mm-hmm. And so I studied it a lot. And um, he's taking a new list of mistakes. Uh, which has the same name as the last group of vowels, but it's not in the traditional vowels, but these are additional vowels, uh, additional niches, additional mistakes. And I understood, I realized, uh, Allison, the structure of his new, the new little vowels he wants to talk about is taken from the 17 traditional Vastus. So there's 17 foundations uh, in one of the ancient Vinaya books. And he's decided to go through the 17 traditional categories of, of behavior or, or, or activities of monks and nuns. And then he's decided to write down problems or mistakes you might make in these 17 different categories or 17 different kinds of behavior or kinds of activities. So what we have now in your text is not uh, the formal vows of a monk or nun. He, he did a very interesting thing. He took the 17 uh, common activities of a monk or nun that Lord Buddha outlined two and a half thousand years ago. And then he wrote down the common mistakes that people make uh, with those 17, okay? So uh, what's useful for us, I think, is to go through uh, those 17 uh, categories first, and then we'll talk about the new mistakes he puts in each category, okay? So uh, I would, I've called these contextual mistakes. Contextual means in a certain context or in a certain situation, uh, there are more mistakes you can make. These are not part of the monks and nuns vows that you take, but they are kind of like rules of behavior uh, during different activities, during the 17 uh, different activities that a monk or a nun is supposed to be doing, okay? So here we go, we're gonna study. So that means first we have to study the 17, the list of the 17 activities. And then we can start looking at the problems in each of the 17, okay? So these are kind of like additional material. And, And I think it makes this commentary special because uh, I haven't seen these uh, 17 categories in other commentaries. And uh, I think it's kind of cool that your book covers them because they are important. Uh, They're not part of the numbered vows of a monk or nun, and they are not in Tsongkhapa's uh, root text, Uh, but but they are very traditional and very important. Uh, so I think it's really cool uh, that your text, that's why your text didn't finish yet. Uh, we still have a lot to go, okay. So here's the 17, what's the Sanskrit word, Allison? Uh, vastu, vastu. Vastu. Here's the 17 Vastus, all right? And, and then you'll, you'll understand it right away. So let's start here. Uh, oh, one thing to say, the 17 vastus or the 17 common activities of a monk or nun are divided into three, three sections, okay? So don't forget, what kind of, what's the school name? Accountant, okay? And they like to make lists. In, in DCI, we call this the school, the accountant school. Uh, what's it called in Sanskrit? So you're talking about um, uh, the professor, Vibhashika? Yeah, Vibhashika, yeah. Uh, the Abhidharma schools, okay, which are also the Vinaya schools. Okay, 
So we're going to have three uh, groups of these 17 new activities. And you have to understand the groups before you can understand the new vows that we're going to have. Okay. So please read. And Alex Rivas wants to check you. Okay. Please read here, Alison. Can you see? Okay. Don't bump my top. I think Allison froze. You're just faking it, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you blinking. <laughs> <laughs> ah, we lost her completely. Okay, uh, I better wait for her. Let's see if she can come back. Uh, Stanley blocked out too. Mm. Uh-oh. Gesh, Geshele, yeah, I've been trying to figure out that map mapak from yesterday. Oh, God bless you, <laughs> mapak mapak. Oh, Sorry, we'll talk I, about it. Later. <laughs> it probably means bad. a mother pig, right? Um, okay, <laughs> okay, Allison, we know you're faking it. Uh, please start here. Domba matoba. Alex is checking you. Uh, she. She. Okay. she is Vastu, okay? So this is the first Vastu group, okay? The first Vastu group only has one member. So the name of the member of the group and the name of the group is the same, okay? Oh. Uh, it, it's a group with only one member. Maybe you cannot call it a group, I guess. Uh, anybody want to tell me what it means? Domba ma topa, topa chepe chungishi. It's the basic activity of a monk or nun where they top the vows after they ma top the vows. They get them after not having them? Good, yeah. It's how to get new, how to get your vows, how to move from a person who didn't have vows to become a person who does have vows. And we saw this, we saw this kind of pattern in Xiaoping's text already. Okay. First they explained the ceremony for how to become a monk or nun. So mm -hmm. this is based the, the first activity of a monk or nun is. Getting your vows. To become a nation. Leaving the home life. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, this is after leaving the home life, kind of. Uh, so this is when you get your real vows, okay? Uh, so that's called the, you could say, yeah, leaving the home life, uh, Vastu. And so the group is called, in the 17, the group is called how to get vows when you don't have vows yet. And the only member, the only activity in that group is how to get vows when you don't already have vows. So it's a little bit confusing, okay? The name of the group is the only member of the group, okay? Now, here's the second group. Uh, please read, uh, Alex, can you keep checking her? If you're still, I don't see you there, okay. I'm here. Okay. Don't, don't pa. Topa me nyampa le pa rung wei shi. La pa sung wei. Chung wei. Chung wei. Sung. Okay, when you see SR, the R is silent. Okay, when you see SR, the R is silent. Okay. Uh, what does sung mean, you guys? To protect. Yeah, how to protect your vows after you get your vows. Okay, so in, in, in English, what do we say? How to keep. How to keep <laughs> your vows. Okay, how to keep your vows so they don't degenerate. Minyam. Okay, how do you keep your vows after you get your vows? Okay, and this in the Vastu system, this is Vastu number two up to Vastu number 10. Okay, uh, so. And then <laughs> those have subgroups, okay? Very confusing. In mm -hmm. the instructions, 
in this group called how to keep your vows after you get your vows, there are a bunch of subgroups, okay? There are groups under the groups, okay? And here we go. Uh, so the first one is called Lapa Yon Jonggi Shi, okay? Uh, this means kind of like, uh, these are Vastus, these are three of the 17 Vastus that are everyday activities that how, how monks and nuns spend the whole year, how they go through the whole year, okay? How they practice being a monk or nun. Yong Jong means how do they practice being a monk or a nun? And there are three Vastus here, number two, number three, and number four. Okay, number one, don't forget, was how to get your vows. Now, these are three general vastus, three general categories about how you live the year. And you know these three, Xiaoping. Can you explain them? Uh, oh. Uh, the summary chi. That's your name. Yep, that's number three. Yeah. And how about these other two guys, number two and number four? What's Sojong? Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, it's the uh, uh, Chai the monks. Yeah, good. Monks together. And, and, yeah, and good. Action. And what's Gakye? Uh, the vacation after the <laughs> retreat. Nice, yeah. Taking a break after the summer retreat. So those are Vastu number two, Vastu number three, and Vastu number four. These are all ways to keep your vows. These are basic categories, how to keep your vows. One is Sojong, go to confession twice a month. Yane, uh, keep the summer retreat, keep quiet uh, once a year. And I'm very happy that the Sedona, a lot of the Sedona, uh, Sangha uh, did a retreat this year, and I hope they. I hope we can do it every year. They did a one month uh, uh, high a Diamond Way retreat at Diamond Mountain, and that's what Diamond Mountain was built for. And we worked for twenty years to make Diamond Mountain a beautiful place. And I'm very very happy that uh, a big group of Sedona and also Mexico Sangha came and did a and and Sangha from Europe. Uh, came and did a retreat there. So I'm very happy with that. Uh, so Sojong Yarne Gaye. These are general things to do after you get your vows to help keep those vows, okay? Now, uh, there's a, there's, well, I made a mistake here. Hmm. Uh, hmm. Oh, wow. Okay, good. Say, read this, Xiaoping, not B2, B2. Cookie Shi. Yeah, Cookie Shi means uh, things that relate to your monk's robes and nun's robes, okay? And out of the 17 foundations, the 17 vastus, uh, this is going to be number five and number six, seven, eight, nine, five to nine out of the 17 uh, relate to, how do you keep, sorry, hang on, five to nine, five to 10, I'm sorry. We should put this here. Uh, this is uh, number five to 10, okay? So five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, six different categories of the 17 foundations, they have relate to how do you keep your clothing? Okay, ke means clothing. How do you, how do you, and that's extremely important because not monks and nuns should look different than other people. If you go to a, like if, if you go, uh, I was in the airport recently and there was a Christian uh, priest and they wear this special white collar and they wear this black coat and and you know he's a priest, even if you never met him. Uh, you know he's supposed to be a special person. He's supposed to be keeping his morality carefully. 
And so to wear the clothes is very important because mm. then it puts pressure on you from your society to be a good person, uh, to, to control yourself, to be a nice person. Okay. Mm. So this category, uh, which means the five, six, seven, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, the six vastus that have to do with your clothing, uh, they themselves are in two different groups. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't make this system, okay? Uh, okay. Uh, about your clothing, uh, there's two categories. One of them has five, six, seven, eight, nine. One of them has five members. And one of them only has one member, okay? So about your clothing, please read this and Alex is still checking you. Dene Kian Kishi. Yeah, what's Dewan Nepa mean, you guys? Anybody? Staying happy? <laughs> yeah, these help you to stay happy. These are factors, Kin, that help you to stay happy. What's that mean? Uh, who knows? Uh, now, <laughs> uh, what's Sakyang? I'll give $50. What's the ceremony? Sakyang? The ceremony where commoners give the monks cloth once a year. Mm, good. $50 for Mr. Moneybags. Okay. Uh, Sakyang. Um, who can tell me what Sakyang is? Sakyang. Sa is like firm or like hard, and yeah. Kyang means yeah. to stretch. So, what's it? Why is the annual gift of cloth to the monks and nuns called Sakyang? Because they like stretch the cloth out to like yeah. to cut it. Yeah, to measure it properly so everybody gets the same uh, on, on a solid surface, like on a, a piece of stone or a piece of wood, okay? Yay, good job. Uh, then there's a kokishi, which means the vastu, which is called clothing. Unfortunately, that's, uh, oh, oh, anyway, that's a, yeah. Unfortunately, that's also the name of the whole of the whole category. Okay, shopping. The member of the category <laughs> is called the Vastu of Clothing. And yeah. the category is called the Vastu of Clothing. So, you know, grandpa was having a little trouble with this. So. Uh, and by the way, this is where we are now. Okay, we went through the first five Vastus without knowing that we were going through the first five busters. So if you go back and look carefully at your notes, um, you will see we went through five busters already. He wasn't just making new categories up in his mind. He was following the ancient, ancient, most ancient, a two and a half thousand year old text called 17 activities or 17 vastus, 17 foundational activities of a monk or nun, okay? And we were going through it and we didn't realize it. He didn't tell us. Uh, and I started to notice a pattern. And um, what he's doing is he's going through 17 groups of activities that monks and nuns do, okay? So we finished the, we're actually in the middle of number six and we didn't know we were in the middle of number six, okay? Uh, let's do the other ones that are coming up later. Uh, please read these three. And, uh, uh, mic, uh, uh, Venerable Cat, can you check her yes, on seven, eight, and nine? Uh, by the way, congratulations on your a successful tree planting activities and also your successful program for the children of Indians, Native Americans in, in America, who uh, came to Diamond Mountain and used the retreat center uh, to study their native culture. So thank you for arranging that. And I think this week Kat is arranging a very exciting program for helping the graduation of, of the young 
Native Americans from high school or from college? College. From college, yeah. Then we have to hire them after that, okay? All right. Yes, uh, sir. Seven, eight, and nine. Please check shopping. Thank you. Ko pa ki shi. Good. Men ki shing shi. Good. Ne ma ki shing. A mel. A mel. Yeah. Okay. Ko pa means what, you guys? Do you remember? Leather? Yeah, and it means specifically leather for shoes. So under what circumstances is a monk or nun allowed to use uh, shoes instead of sandals, okay? In India, uh, mm -hmm. monks and nuns are supposed to live a poor life and they're not supposed to wear shoes, they're supposed to wear sandals. But there are exceptions. For example, if you live in the Himalayas, you're allowed to wear shoes. And then there's exceptions. Can you wear shoes with strings or not? Uh, because they are more expensive. And uh, so that's called, you can call it the shoe category. All right. Uh, what's number eight, you guys? Menkishi. You know menla. Medicine. That's the rules on taking medicine. Or keeping yeah, it maybe. exactly, Nick. Because uh, you're allowed to keep medicine in your house. You're allowed to store medicine in your house but you're not allowed to store food in your house. You're allowed to use medicine afternoon, but you're not allowed to eat food afternoon. So I don't know, you could say chocolate chip cookies are medicine in my opinion. And then you could uh, keep eating them afternoon. Okay, these are the rules for, you have to make it clear with monks and nuns because if they can break a rule, they will. All <laughs> right, uh, next one, Xiaoping. No, what's a name now? Mattress. Yeah, these are the rules about mattresses. Uh, how thick can your mattress be? How do you take care of the mattresses? Who takes care of the mattresses? In, in an old monastery, and I lived in, in one, the main uh, exciting thing about the mattresses is the bed bugs. All of the mattresses have bed bugs. Everybody shares them. The bed bugs keep you up all night. That's a long story. Okay, so there's now. Uh, now there's a, a there's a what do you call six category right? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The sixth category in the in the group called clothes is number 10. And let's read that one. Kim's gonna check you. Yay. Yeah, and as I, you can see in my note here, uh, there's, a, a, there's a group of activities called the 101 rituals or the 101 activities of monks and nuns. And these are uh, the small rituals that we do. For example, blessing your robes. If you uh, didn't uh, keep them with you uh, for 24 hours, uh, these are smaller activities that monks and nuns do. So inside the group called clothing, which also has a group called clothing in it, but inside the group called clothing, uh, which has six members. Uh, the last one is called the 101 little things that monks and nuns should be doing, okay? And that group, Kunlakyap, what's that mean, you guys? Covers them all. Yeah, it covers everything. It covers getting your vows. It covers keeping your vows. It covers fixing your vows, okay? Which is the next big category, okay? The third big category of the 17 vastus or foundations is called, uh, please read something. Rob Haggerty wants to check you. Okay. 
I think we have a connection to the lunar lander. Okay, <laughs> next one is too much shuchukishi. Okay, uh, what's nyapa mean, you guys? To generate. Yeah, if you break your vows. In English, we say break your vows, right? You have to cheer chu. Fix them. Fix them back. So this cheer means back. Okay, bring them back to. Uh, bring them back to what they are. Now this covers vastu number 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. The last seven of the 17 vastus relate to how do you fix your vows if you break them? I think that's the biggest category, right? Why is that? People because break their you, vows will, time. you will break, you will break, you break your break vows. Them. <laughs> You will break your vows. And don't think you're a bad person, okay? You are a bad person, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, the reason you take vows is to change your behavior. And it's not like the day you take the vows, uh, your behavior changes. It doesn't. Uh, when you take vows, it's, it's, you're saying, I will try to control myself. And then you will break them from time to time. If, if, you, if you take vows, and I don't care, bodhisattva vows, tantric vows, pratimoksha vows, if you take vows and you never break them, I don't see any reason to take them. Uh, <laughs> there's no reason to take them. If, if you're such a holy person that you never break these <laughs> vows, then why the hell should you take the vows? You know, uh, the purpose of vows is to control wild horses. And sometimes they kick you and sometimes we make mistakes. So I think uh, when you take vows, it's very important to understand we expect you to break them because it's a new control on your mind that you didn't have before. And of course you're gonna break them. So that's actually, the biggest group of categories in the 17, okay? The, the biggest focus. It's easy to take vows. It's easy to put monks robes on, nuns robes on. It's damn hard to keep them, okay? Uh, then you're gonna have to fix them from time to time, okay? All right, so the third big category in the 17 vustus is how to fix your vows, uh, okay? and it has two subcategories. Uh, the first one is called the how to fix your vows uh, when you break something, okay? The second category is called special vastus for when the sangha doesn't get along with each other, okay? Mm -hmm. Three of the 17 vastus, 20%, of all Vinaya is dedicated to problems in the Sangha with each mm -hmm. other, okay? So maybe it's common. <laughs> maybe it's a normal thing. Maybe people trying to live together and keep their vows together, they've been having fights for two and a half thousand years, okay? And if there's 20 or 25% of the Vastus are dedicated to how to fix problems inside the Sangha, it means there will be, and there always was, problems inside the Sangha. So don't be surprised when Sangha people fight with each other or they don't get along or somebody is complaining about somebody else. There's three Vastus dedicated to how to fix problems in the Sangha when they start fighting with each other. Okay, so it must be common. All right, but we're not there yet. Let's talk about, there are four vastus that relate to fixing your vows after you break them, okay? So please start with number 11. Kat, you're checking her. Let's finish 11, then we'll go to 12. Okay. So, wow. Oh. <laughs> Jowa? Jowa, yeah. Jowa, okay. Jowa. So, Shaki. So, Shaki. So, Shaki. 
Yeah, and uh, this is a very strange um, wording. Uh, I'm not totally uh, familiar with it, but basically it means in order to fix your vowels in a happy way, uh, it may be necessary for you to undertake some other activity. For example, uh, you might be given uh, the job to sweep the temple if you broke your vows in a certain way, or you might be asked to make a special confession, or you, or you might be asked to go stay outside of the Sangha's uh, community for a few days or something. Okay. All right. Mm, what do they call it? Uh, we have it at Diamond Mountain in the old days. Uh, suspended. You will be suspended for a few days. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, please read this one. Kat, you're still checking. Uh, I mean, Kadin. Kadin, sorry. Do tang do mean to peshi. Yeah, and this is the vastu relating to the timing of your confession. Okay, what's the right time to confess? What's not the right time to confess? Okay, uh, number 13. Yeah, these are vastus that relate to so, means sojong, and gak means gage, and they are. Uh, advice is about how to keep your commitment to Sojong and, and the summer retreat. Okay. All right. Uh, go ahead. Mitchowa Nam Tur Ki Chir Chok Che Su Ki Che Chir Che Su Ki Shi. Yeah, good. So back in number 11 was how to do your confession. Troa uh, means if you're happy to do a confession. This 14 is mitroa. If you say you're not happy to do a confession, nentur uh, means uh, how do we kind of force the person to, uh, what's a polite way to force a monk or nun to, to clean their vows, okay? All right, that's 14. Now, here come the three vastus. These are 15, 16, and 17. And uh, they relate to fixing a problem inside the Sangha, if the Sangha starts fighting with each other. OK, please read these. Kading, you're still checking her. Be, be louder, Kading. Pretend you're checking your two boys. <laughs> Sopa chokishi. What's that mean? What's sopa? We had it yesterday. Mm. Fighting. Uh, yeah, fighting. In, in the debate ground, it's called debating. But uh, this means arguments inside the Sangha. Okay. How do you fix these arguments? Here's three. Lake itsupa shije. Shije means to calm down people. Shiwarche. It means make people peaceful. Okay. How do you calm down people who are fighting during special activities? Okay. Like I don't know. They're they're doing sojourn together and they start fighting. Okay. So lake itsupa means. How do you calm down monks and nuns who start fighting during sojo, which is really bad? Okay, 16. Kurloi Zopa Shi Chet. Yeah, and this is called Korlo means Korlo Yen. Korlo means the wheel. So uh, Sugeng's text is called Sipe Korlo, the wheel of, of life, right? Uh, so Korlo means wheel, and uh, the unity of the Sangha is called the wheel, okay? The sweet cooperation of the Sangha is called the wheel, okay? And if there's a serious problem in the Sangha, that's uh, Korlo Tsopa Shije. If it's like a serious fight between the monks uh, or the nuns, which might break the wheel, 
it might break the whole community. Uh, that's called Kor Lutzipa, okay? And the most famous example happened uh, during the Buddhist time, Lord Buddha's time. And mm -hmm. his Sangha had such a bad fight that they broke, they broke into two parts. In fact, my monastery broke into two parts about five years ago. Uh, it's a, after 400, after 600 years. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's a very, very serious uh, problem in the Sangha. And traditionally, one of the two great disciples of the Buddha, which is Shariputra and Maud Galiyana, they have to fix it. <laughs> okay. So it takes an extraordinary monk or nun to bring the Sangha back together. Okay. And, and I remember uh, the head of the Tantric College, one of my teachers, uh, Tunde Dopke, uh, he worked really hard to bring the monastery back together. And he succeeded for several years. And so uh, that's a very serious uh, job. And uh, Shariputra was good at it because he shared up Kichok. What's that mean, Ben Kramer? Shariputra uh, shared up Kichok. Uh, because he was the most wise? Yeah, he's number one wise guy. Not yeah. like you, wise guy. And uh, uh, Mount Galliana because he was Zutuki Chok. Uh, he had the best superpowers? Yeah, superpowers. So either you got to have big wisdom or superpowers to bring the monks and nuns back together. Okay, and here's number 17. And then we finish the 17 Vastus and we can start our class. Shempe Zopa Shi Chet. Yeah, and then there's a whole vastu called all the other kinds of arguments that monks and nuns get into. <laughs> so there's a whole separate category of uh, other kinds of arguments uh, that monks and nuns might have with each other. And again, uh, you know, it's kind of shocking when, I, when you hear Geshe say his monastery broke into two parts. It feels terrible, right? Uh, but, but we're all normal. We're all normal people. And, and the reason we become a monk, the reason we become a nun is we're trying to control ourselves. We're trying to be better people. And we don't always succeed. If we succeeded all the time, we wouldn't have to take the vows. Uh, so I think it's just a sign that we're normal people. And I don't think we should, I don't think we should be so upset about it. Uh, it's, it's, it's normal that people fight with each other. Uh, it's normal that we have wars in the world. In fact, uh, we have much less wars than before. Uh, but still, uh, we're going to have to learn to fix it. And that's what these vows are for. Okay. Yay, Xiaoping, we're ready to go to your class. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. If you're interested in the definitions of all these seven and the language, here's the list, okay? Dun, 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 dun. So don't forget, uh, we're in the middle of the clothing mistakes that you can make, besides wearing bad colors. Uh, we're in the middle of clothing mistakes you can make. And that was after you got your vows. So we must be in the second group of vastus. okay? All right, here we go. Please read. And who's going to check you is Sina, Venerable Sina. Yay. Thanks for mm -hmm. running Diamond Mountain. It's going well. It never went so well, actually. It's kind of frightening. Chokor Chetseki Sabui Sheng So Shing Tang Chung Sa Ki Shenso Sum Tang. What's this one? I think Dringla. <laughs> yeah. Jing. Okay. Jingla de Niki Par de Se de Le Shentu Chapatang. Good. Okay. Uh, Chuga is one of the three required parts of the robes. And it's that, uh, you know, that yellow robe on the outside, right? With the, with the patches on it. Uh, mm -hmm. 
your dharma, your outside dharma shawl. Uh, the maximum length of it when you have it on, right? So the shawl is very long, but actually the width of the shawl, which means from your shoulder to your waist, okay? Or your shoulder to your bottom, uh, the normal length should be uh, of that bolt of cloth. Selbu means cloth. Sheng means the side, meaning uh, the, the narrow part of the shawl. It should, the maximum is 34 sore. Here's a sore. These are four sore. Okay. Sore means finger width. Okay. So maximum uh, 34 sore. Uh, this is, uh, how many is this? Uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah. Something like this. Okay. Uh, the robe, the outer robe shouldn't go down further than that. Okay, 34 is maximum. What's a minimum? Chung uh, 33. Okay. <laughs> By the way, whose finger do you use? Wow. Ours. No, uh, you, <laughs> no, well, technically, but you use that monk or that nun's fingers because if they're a huge person, it's going to fit them well. And if mm. they're a tiny person, it's going to fit them well, you see, because you're measuring the shawl from part of their own body. So it's a perfect system. And Chinese medicine also does this, okay? Uh, ding la, if you want to make it in the med middle, right? Uh, if you want to be perfect, ding uh, yi par, what's that mean, you guys? Make it right between those two. Yeah. yeah, make it right between between 34 and 33. Make it 33 and a half, okay? Uh, mm -hmm. If you make it a different measurement, de la shen, if you make it a different uh, measurement, uh, you broke the bell. You broke mm -hmm. this uh, suggestion. Let's call them the suggestions from mm -hmm. the 17 vestors, okay? Then you broke uh, the, one of the suggestions from the 17 busters. These are not monks and nuns vows. They are suggestions. If you ever saw a monk with a shawl that was too short or too long, you know it looks kind of ridiculous, okay? Uh, so it's a good rule. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, I think we're going to get into uh, words text. Why? Seeds? Smear. Smear. Smearing? Yeah. Tying? Yeah. No, tie dyeing. Tie dyeing. Oh, tie dyeing. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, please read. And oh. Isabel, will you check her? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Sunam, can you do a few more and then I'll go to Isabel? Okay. Uh, I, I need to get Sunam up to speed here. Here we go. Sunam, you're checking. Mm -hmm. uh, Dog Shing to Sawet. Mm-dong. Yeah, this is cute. Uh, if your uh if you buy some cloth for your robes, which is too bright, okay? That purple is killing everybody, okay? Uh, it's too bright, it's too, it became a fashion statement, uh, okay? Then uh, that cloth, you should take some chew, some water, and you should wash the cloth until it looks more, uh, how do you, monkly or nunly, okay? You don't mm. look like uh, a fashion model, okay? Out of nyampa means like faded color? Yeah, in, this means, uh, Nick, you tell me, kadog nyampa che. It makes the color fade. Yeah, you're supposed to fade the color, 
Okay, bring the color down a bit. Kadok nyambar che means you're supposed to bring the color down a, a bit. Okay, don't be so loud. Okay, and if you don't do that, if you don't wear clothes like that, then you broke this this suggestion inside the vastus. Okay. All right. That's time, Geshe. When we just started. <laughs> Uh, but I, I'm so happy shopping that I, I now I feel comfortable with your text because I, I couldn't see why he's throwing in all these extra vowels. Okay. Thank you so much, Geshla. It's cool. It's cool. And it, it it's a big addition to your to the value of your text. For example, if they go into some detail about how to keep harmony in a group. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a very important thing, and that's very necessary. Uh, mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. <laughs> All right, you guys take a break. Yeah, Thank we you. have ten, 10 minutes. Yay! Thanks, Kesha. You're welcome. Thanks. Bye.